I have created a simple spreadsheet that takes the outputs from PV Watts and a couple other resources and calculates simple payback period for the project that's being evaluated. Now this is something that's very easy to create and it's something that if you have Excel on your computer you can generate in just a few minutes. So the way that this worksheet functions is and I've color coded these so that it's easier to follow along. You start by putting in the outputs from PV Watts, then you pull some incentive information from this website, desireusa.org, which I'll show you in a second. Then you pull in some expected costs for the PV technology, and the output of that, after a couple of calculations, is simple payback period in years. So to begin with, we'll go over to PV Watts and we'll get system production. 1,642,635. We also need the energy value from PV Watts. So that is 227,341. And then the last piece of information that we need from PV Watts is the system size in KW. So we'll go over here, we'll go down to where the input section is, and the number that we had put in originally was 1,240 KW. And you can see the sheet is already calculating some of the numbers but we need to put more information in here before it'll give us the complete picture of the economic feasibility of this project. So the next piece of information that we'll go and look for are the incentives that are available in this location. So we'll go to the desireusa.org website. The desireusa.org website is a tremendous resource for finding incentives for renewable energy projects. There are a couple of ways that you can use the site, but what we want to look for is we want to look for incentives that are available for this location. So there are two types of incentives that are going to be available in this location. There are the federal incentives and there are the state incentives. So what we'll do is we'll scroll down to policy incentives by state. We'll click on Massachusetts. And there are a large number of incentives available in Massachusetts. It's a great place to do solar projects. So the first thing that we'll look for is we'll look for the investment tax credit. So for this project, it will be the business energy investment tax credit. And what this incentive supports is a 30% tax credit on the total capital cost for the solar project. So here it says 30% for solar fuel cells wind. This is a solar PV project, so this qualifies. And you can look at all of the different requirements on these programs below. If there's a maximum, what kind of technologies are eligible. But this is an incentive that's used on most solar projects across the country. So what we'll do is take this 30%. We'll go back to the calculation worksheet. And here under investment tax credit, we'll put in 0 0.3. The next thing that we need to look for is the production incentive. And I know that in Massachusetts there is a production incentive, but I'm not sure how large it is. So once we go back to the main page for incentives in Massachusetts, you'll notice that there's a lot of incentives here. It's showing that there's 99 different incentives that are summarized on the Desire website. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to do a search. We'll search for just the solar incentives. And you can see that there are incentive programs for different types of technologies. Also, some local municipalities have specific incentive programs. The one that we actually care about is this one here, the Solar Renewable Energy Certificates, the SREC2 program. And that's a statewide program that pays for solar recs, and it pays them based on how much energy is generated. So depending on what location the project is being built in, it's possible that some of these other incentives may apply. But for now, let's just look at this SRAC2 program. So the nice thing about Desire is it gives you a quick summary of the incentive program. It tells you some of the constraints on the program, size limits, things like that. It also gives you a link to the website. 
So after glancing through this incentive, we can see that there's actually not a indication of, of what the production tax credit for this location will be. So we have to dig a little deeper and go to the SRAC 2 program website. And here it describes more, you know, who qualifies, how you apply, things like that. So currently in Massachusetts, the SREC 2 program is phasing out and they are phasing in a new program called the Smart Solar Program. So I have a summary pulled up over here that talks about the compensation levels for the new Solar Smart Program. And these are just the, the base compensation rates, but for simplicity's sake, We'll just pull one of the production incentives off of this new program so that we can continue with our example here. And this program will be rolling out over the next few months and in the first part of summer. So this is kind of where things are going. So this system that we're looking at here, we can, we can find the incentive in this table. It's not a small system, so there are different tranches for for different system sizes and also for different utility territories. And this project, if you remember from the inputs, is 1200 kW. So we will be in this, this largest system category, this largest incentive category. It's greater than 1000 kW and less than 5000 kW. So this incentive will apply for 20 years and depending on which utility service territory you're in, the rates will change, but this location is in national grid territory. So this incentive will be a little bit over 15 cents, 15 and a half cents per kilowatt hour. So we'll go back over here to our calculation worksheet, put in the production incentive, 0 0.155. And that calculates the total amount of money that this incentive is worth. You can do some formatting on that. So it's worth about $250,000 a year. So the last thing that we need to put into this calculation worksheet is the PV cost. Each year, NREL releases a PV cost benchmark document which catalogs cost of implementing PV systems from around the country for the previous 12 month period. The last time this publication has been released is Q1 2017. So this is the document that we will use to find out what are reasonable cost assumptions to put into our calculations. So if we scroll down into the executive summary, talks about the assumptions that went into this. And here's the table that we are looking for. There are different categories of system sizes, residential systems with an average size of 5.7 kW, that's a little small, a commercial PV category where the average size is 200 kW, that's also a little bit small but closer, utility scale which is 100 megawatts, that's, that's too large, and then utility scale with single axis tracking. So the one that we want to use here is this commercial PV 200 kW average size category. And if we look down here for 2017, that cost will be $1.85 per watt. So that is what we'll use in the calculations that we run for this system. $1.85. And that's the last piece of information that you need to put into this calculation worksheet. And once all of those inputs are put in, there are a few pieces of math that you need to do in order to calculate that. All of those equations are shown in the callout boxes. But with the information from these couple of resources, PV Watts, the Desire USA website, and then the annual PV cost report, you can calculate a high-level simple payback for a solar PV project. And in this case, the simple payback period is really, really good. So this system will pay back all of the money that goes into building it in just three, you know, not even three and a half years. So this is a really, really good project. And each organization is a little bit different when it comes to determining what return on investment is required in order for a system to make sense for, for their organization. But typically, any time the system pays itself back before the end of the useful life of the equipment, that is considered a feasible project. 
and typically these systems last for 25 years. So anything under a 25 year payback could consider moving forward, but typically the systems have to have a payback of 15 years or 10 years or less in order to be considered economically feasible. And also this is a discussion to have with the solar developer and other project partners to see if the simple payback period calculated for a project is enough to, to keep everybody interested and to make everybody want to move forward with the project. And this was in fact a favorable enough project that it ended up going through and being built as a municipal PV project. It was constructed in 2017 and they installed a total of 1.5 megawatts of PV on this site. There is a useful tool on the Repowering America's Lands website called the Project Tracking Matrix. And this walks through the different projects that have been implemented since the program started tracking them, shows statistics over the years, and is a really valuable resource to look at sites that have, have successfully gone through the development process. So if you click on the link on the slide, it will bring you to the Project Tracking Matrix website, and there is a link to this PDF, which goes through how many projects have been built over the years, you know, number of projects as well as capacity. And then towards the middle of the document, there's an actual listing of the projects that successfully went through. And you can see various different types of information about the projects, what capacity it is, where they're located, who developed the project, when it was completed, a lot of very useful information. 